The ASUS Sunbook 14 OLED strikes the perfect balance between portability and great features, like the OLED screen, despite its smaller size. And ASUS have sponsored this video, so I can show you all about it. ASUS's 14-inch Lumina OLED touchscreen is the star of the show here. It looks great, the colours and contrast are stunning. OLED screens just look the best in my opinion. They're always crisp and clear as they provide true blacks by turning off individual pixels. Now that said, we all know that OLED isn't perfect. We know that burn-in is possible with extended use over time, but ASUS have a number of OLED care options built in to help reduce this. First, the screen automatically dims after 5 minutes of idle as burn-in is more likely at higher brightness. After 30 minutes of idle, by default with pixel refresh enabled, a specially designed screensaver kicks in, which reduces the chance of burn-in by illuminating and darkening all pixels equally. The laptop comes with dark mode enabled by default, again to keep fewer pixels running bright, and you've got the option of auto-hiding the Windows taskbar, removing static elements on screen. There's also pixel shift, which moves the displayed pixel slightly to avoid consistently showing static images. If that's not enough, a current driving algorithm detects aging pixels that are subject to burn-in and compensates for it, keeping things looking good with a more accurate perceived image over time. On top of that, ASUS have a two-year warranty for the screen if you do happen to experience burn-in, though this varies by country. Honestly, I think it's great that ASUS are taking this approach to OLED. They're not just promoting the positives and ignoring the negatives, but are instead actively and openly doing what they can to improve the OLED experience. But of course, there's more to this new laptop than just the screen. The ZenBook 14 has a nice slim design, at just under 0.6 inches or 1.49 centimeters thin. It's lightweight at 2.8 pounds, perfect for on-the-go productivity, even if you do need to take the small 65 watt Type-C charger with you. But that's going to be less likely, because battery life is seriously impressive. It lasted for 11 hours in my regular YouTube video playback test, making it one of the best results I've ever recorded. When it does come time to charge, ASUS says it can charge up to 60% in just 49 minutes. The MyASUS software gives you the option of enabling battery care mode, which limits the maximum charge level to 80%, helping improve battery longevity. It has a lightweight aluminum alloy chassis with an anodized lid, which feels smooth and sturdy. I wasn't able to bend the lid at all, it's solid. There was some flex to the keyboard when pushing down hard, not unusual for a thinner machine, but it wasn't ever noticeable just typing normally. It's available in the lighter, foggy silver finish that I've got here, and a darker, ponder blue finish. I found the silver keyboard to look better with the lighting off in a well-lit room, as that provided better contrast. But the white backlighting was useful in a darker environment, and can be adjusted between three brightness levels with the F4 shortcut key. It has an ambient light sensor too, so you can set the keys to automatically brighten or dim based on your surroundings. I like how typing on the keyboard feels. It's got one point four millimeters of travel and the key presses just feel nice and clicky. There's even a shortcut on the F8 key to open the emoji window, something I've never seen before, but definitely beats pressing the windows and full stop shortcut all the time. The glass touchpad is smooth to the touch and works well. It's nice and big, and you can hold your finger over the top right corner to enable the numpad, while the top left corner adjusts the brightness between two levels. Obviously, it's not as nice as a regular numpad, but considering 14 inch laptops don't have space for a numpad, this is certainly better than nothing. The screen goes back the full 180 degrees for sharing, and the back raises up a little when you open the lid, improving cooling by allowing the air in underneath and giving a slightly better angle for typing. There's a fair bit of connectivity considering the thinner design. From front to back, the right side has two Thunderbolt 4 Type-C ports, a 3.5mm audio combo jack, and a HDMI 2.1 output, while the left side just has a USB 3.2 Gen 1 Type-A port. Either Type-C port can be used to charge the laptop, and both offer DisplayPort output for connecting screens, allowing for a total of four displays, including the laptop screen. There's a 1080p camera above the screen, with a physical privacy shutter, and with Windows Hello Face Unlock, you can wake it up from sleep and get straight back to work without delay. Here's how the camera and microphones look and sound, and this is what it sounds like while typing on the clicky keyboard.
My ZenBook 14 is powered by Intel's latest Core Ultra 9 185H Media Lake processor, offering 6 P cores, 8 E cores, and 2 of their new lower powered E cores. With Media Lake, the operating system will first try to run a new workload on these lower powered E cores, only sending it to the regular E cores and then P cores if more power is required. This approach results in better power efficiency and more runtime compared to the last gen approach of firing up the P cores straight away. The included MyAsus software gives us three different performance profiles, so we can choose to get more performance at the expense of more fan noise if needed. You can easily swap between the performance modes at any time with the function and F shortcut. CPU performance is better in the higher modes, as expected and shown here in Cinebench. Higher modes allow the processor to use more power, but more power equals more heat, so let's find out how loud the fans get. It was completely silent at idle, and even during light work. I almost never noticed the fans unless I was running a heavy benchmark. Whisper and standard modes were still relatively quiet, even with a full-blown CPU stress test running for hours. Most apps don't actually behave that way for extended periods, so quieter fans are expected. I've demonstrated the worst case here. The keyboard was still fairly cool to the touch, even with the heavy CPU workload running for hours. The warmer spots only felt a little warm, it's nowhere near feeling hot, even in the higher performance mode. A great result overall for thermals. The CPU's single core performance was quite impressive when compared to much bigger laptops, which helps translate into a nice snappy experience in Windows. It's worth noting that all the laptops performing better are physically larger too, so this is a great result from a thin and light chassis. The performance hardly lowers at all if we unplug the charger and run completely on battery power, so you can still get work done without slowing down while on the go. It's even able to beat a few of those larger laptops now. Impressive stuff. Intel's Core Ultra series also has their Arc graphics inside, so although this is not a gaming laptop, you can definitely do some light gaming on the side with these powerful integrated graphics. We're looking at a 70% FPS boost in this game compared to last year's ZenBook. The Core Ultra series also has a Neural Processing Unit, or NPU, which is basically dedicated hardware for accelerating future AI workloads. A good example is using a background blur effect with the camera. This task gets offloaded to the NPU, using less power compared to standard CPU or GPU acceleration. In other words, this means the task is now more power efficient, which equals more battery life and a quieter laptop. The ZenBook was quite easy to open after removing 7 TR5 screws. Inside we've got the 4-cell 75 watt hour battery taking up most of the space, a full-sized M.2 2280 slot just above with the SSD installed, but Wi-Fi is soldered to the motherboard, and so is the RAM. That's just an unfortunate compromise of a smaller design like this. You can't fit everything with without going bigger. So although there's no memory upgrades, it is available with up to 32 gigs, which should be plenty for most people for some time to come. And soldering does at least mean it uses faster LPDDR5X memory. Mine came with a 1TB PCIe Gen 4 SSD installed, and the speeds were decent. At least you've got the option of upgrading to more capacity if you want, unlike say a MacBook which uses soldered memory. It has Wi-Fi 6E too, and I measured transfer speeds faster than gigabit, a good result and faster than many wired ethernet connections. The speakers are on the left and right sides down the front, and I'd say they sound above average for a laptop this size. They get quite loud at max volume, but I found them clearer with some bass and still plenty loud at about half volume. So along with ASUS's Lumina OLED screen providing excellent visuals, the ZenBook 14 also has excellent battery life, and a 16 core processor that brings impressive performance from a thinner and lighter design, making it perfect for using at home, in the office, or on the road. You can get more information about it with the link below the video, so check that out for all the details. Or check out one of these videos next to find out about all of the other new laptops that ASUS have coming in 2024. There's a lot of cool stuff, so I'll see you in one of those next.